25% of our energy comes from snacks. That's huge. Yeah. If we put that in the context of a quarter of all of our calories are coming from snacks, but when we think about improving our diet, often we think about, okay, how can we make our dinner or our lunch more healthy? Yeah. But actually snacks is a really, really simple strategy to improve the healthiness of our diet. Mm -hmm. From our research, we actually found that 44% of people that have really healthy main meals mm -hmm. actually have really unhealthy snacks. Doctor's Kitchen. Recipes, health, lifestyle. We've got Dr. Sarah in the kitchen with us today. What does an ideal snack look like in your opinion? I think an ideal snack would be nuts. Okay. And I'm a little bit biased because I have actually conducted a clinical trial yeah. where we swapped out 20% of people's energy from typical snacks uh -huh. with almond nuts. Okay. And what we found is by not changing anything else in the diet, only changing their snacks, we saw significant improvements in the healthiness of their blood vessels that actually equated to more than a 50% reduction in heart disease risk. Oh, wow. We saw a huge improvement in bad cholesterol, in LDL cholesterol, and we saw improvements in lots of other measures, including a measure called heart rate variability, which mm -hmm. I know yeah. you're also interested in. That study really illustrates the power of changing just one simple dietary habit. So you've got nuts, seeds at the top, and at the bottom we've got a mixture of all these high refined carbohydrates yeah, yeah. and all the rest of it. Layer above that. Say kind of crisps, digestives. Uh -huh. We got to think why are people snacking? Yeah. And it's interesting because there's some research that's shown 20% of people snack just out of boredom and habit. Yeah. That's what we want to stop. 20% of people snack because they fancy a little treat. So fine, have that digestive, have that bread, but not lots. Of so we've got nuts and seeds. Uh, so I've got some hazelnuts and peanuts here. What about fruit? Uh, you mentioned dried fruit. I think fruit's a great snack. I would never discourage anyone from having any kind of plant-based foods as a snack. I would try and have a snack that combines foods in such a way that you're getting a good mix of your proteins, your fibers, your fats, yeah. and your carbohydrates. Yeah, and there are ways to make these ingredients a little bit more interesting, you know, with spices, so you can dry roast these with a bit of cinnamon and a tiny bit of sugar, for example. You can coat them in dark chocolate. You've got all those extra polyphenols yep. and flavanols. Absolutely. So there's ways to jazz up these mm -hmm. different ingredients. You don't need to necessarily have them in the whole form mm. to get the best out of them. I think the easiest way to improve the quality of your snacks is to think ahead a little bit yeah. because often we are snacking because you know we're rushed, we're quickly feeling hungry, mm -hmm. we want to grab something mm -hmm. to satisfy that short-term hunger. And so that's why it's very easy to reach for many of these pre-packaged snacks that aren't necessarily the healthiest for us. So if we can plan ahead and have like a snack jar that could be like the nuts coated in the chocolate already, yeah. then that's a great way of still satisfying that hunger, satisfying the craving for something sweet. In between these sort of like tiers, right? Yep. So you've got your, your whole food uh, nuts and you've got your fruit and everything else and eggs and dairy yep. um, that are satiating. You've got all this sort of like area of gray. Now we get asked about these all the time. Mm -hmm. I actually haven't seen half of these because mm -hmm. we wanted to get your honest opinion on them after looking at the back of the pack. What I would say generally is the minimally processed snack, the better. What we need to be a bit cautious about is the health halo yeah. that is often on many snacks yeah. where it comes in, you know, this beautiful kind of matte packaging and it's got all of these health claims. So you're eating it thinking, wow, I'm eating something really healthy, mm. but actually it's incredibly processed. Yeah. Just because it says plant-based, it could have a hundred different ingredients that aren't natural. When you're looking at back pack labeling, I wouldn't focus on the nutrients mm -hmm. personally, mm -hmm. because I think food is about the ingredients and sure. not about the nutrients. I would also be a bit cautious if there's hundreds of different things in there, like loads of different additives. Mm. Why they have to add all of those yeah. millions of things in, you know, Nature intended food to be pleasurable in yeah. its natural state. Yeah. Often, if anything says on it, low, no, or reduced, I'm always a little bit cautious. Red flag. What have they had to add in? Yeah. These have lots of ingredients oh, yeah. added, but you know, in small amounts, even though it does have lots of different ingredients added in, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be harmful for sure. you. And I would still select something like this yeah. above a McVitie's biscuit if I'm trying to make sure I'm taking a more healthy choice. Let's go for popcorn. Is it a healthier snack? Is it just as refined or sugar spiking as some of the other ones? So I think it depends on the type of popcorn. Okay. I actually consider it a healthy snack huh. if it's cooked without lots of other stuff okay. with it. So if my kids want a healthy snack, I'm happy to put one of those bagged cook at home popcorns that have nothing else in it or in a pan with yeah. some corn and I think it's a great snack. It's also not too energy dense, and uh -huh. the problem with a lot of the foods and snacks that are out there now, they're very energy dense, meaning there's loads of calories packed into mm. you know, a tiny amount, which is why 
many plant-based foods are better for us because they're not very energy dense. Mm -hmm. And so popcorn is one that is actually quite difficult to overeat. Okay. However, having said that, you know, going to the cinema and the one that's got loads yeah, of yeah. sugars <laughs> or sugar one, that's less healthy. Looking at the ingredients, 85% whole corn, rapeseed oil, sea salt. Yep, I would say that that's three simple ingredients, rapeseed oil, you know, the evidence shows no harmful impacts of that. Let's go for these. So these are really popular with kids. Now My kids love them. Do they? So these are, I don't know how you describe these, they're like fruit, fruit leather? So they're made 75% apples, 16% uh -huh. pears, all made out of fruit. Yeah. There's no other added ingredients. The only problem is, is that you're compacting that all into a tiny, tiny snack. And so what I'd be interested to know, how many pieces of fruit are in there? Because if you think like, this that, apple is yeah. something like 90% water. If you consume an apple versus if you were to have the apple juice, this would probably take you maybe five minutes to eat. You'd drink the equivalent apple juice in about seconds. 10 seconds. Yeah. That's why you can overeat often because you're eating it quickly or drinking it quickly. What I would worry with these is that even though they say it's all the original fruit, how much sugar are you getting in a quick single dose? Yeah. And I think it's that energy density that I'd be a little bit cautious of. But it's the problem where you have these like health halos that it's like one of your five a day, no added sugar. Fine, but it's not in the original way you intended to eat that fruit. Yeah. And that's what you've got to think. Is it recognizable from the original fruit? This is an interesting point because we're now developing that extra sort of level of health reflex here. If a parent was to look at the ingredients, you'd be like, I did exactly what Dr. Sarah said. I looked for minimal ingredients, yep. there weren't any additives yep. in it, but now there's an extra consideration. It's about how different is said product to the original. Moving on to bars. Yep. So protein bars, again, lots of health claims, 20 grams of protein, mm -hmm. only 1.7 grams of sugar. I would say that there are some bars that are better than others. The bars that are better than others, like this one, for example, where I can actually recognize what's in there. Yeah. I don't know if we can open this. Yeah, open it, yeah, yeah. This says it's, it it's a nuts bar. Now, yeah. even if we break that, yeah. I can't see uh, any nuts. This is a great example of the kind of health halo that it says these claims that it's high protein, low sugar, hey, it must be great for me. Yes, it's probably better for you than having maybe a pack of crisps or a biscuit because you'll probably feel full for longer because it's mm. got the fiber in it, but it's incredibly processed. Yeah. So you're removing all of the beneficial aspects of the ingredients that have gone in there. So for example, the fact that all the nuts are really finely ground means that you metabolize it differently to these nuts that yeah. are whole nuts. You absorb more of the energy from that bar than you would, for example, from this bar. Gotcha. So I think we can't just say, oh, all bars are bad or all bars are good. It does depend on the bar. So in terms of the tiers, we've got these whole food snacks. Yep trying to get these as much as possible yep. if you are looking to yep, replace which snacks. all of these. All and of things these. that you might not traditionally think of as snacks. Yep. Leftovers. And yep. you know, I often will go in the fridge and see what's I left over from the night before. Mm. So that's still a great snack. Totally, yeah. And then you've got tears underneath. So yeah, then minimally you've got your processed. slightly, well, I would say that's unprocessed. Then you've yep. got your ones that might have a little few extra bits to make it a bit tasty, like sure. a bit of salt or something. I would put that. Probably put that yeah. there, yeah. And then, and, and then, then you've got down to these, kind down of these. Okay. But what I would be careful of for kids, but all ages is having snacks that are only giving you carbohydrate mm -hmm. because what happens is, is you have that peak in mm -hmm. blood glucose. You then often have a dip after that dip makes you not feel very good at the point in time, but makes you feel desperately hungry. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why quite often if you're giving kids these kind of foods, then a few hours later, they're even more hungry than if they hadn't had them in the first place. And I think mixing things together, like maybe give them half of this, but together with that, if they like yogurt or they like nuts, yeah, 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 or there's yeah. something else that's high in protein and fiber and fat. Let's talk about sugars. I'm gonna move this to one side. Sugars, is there a difference between all these different types of sugars when we consume them? Or does your body respond to them in exactly the same way? So the way you process this mm -hmm. versus this syrup versus this honey versus this date nectar, the way your body metabolizes it in terms of the increase in circulating blood glucose is the same across okay. all of these. There is some evidence to show that for some honeys, for example, and some maple syrups, they do have a higher level of certain chemicals that we know are good for us. So what we call phytochemicals, mm -hmm. and some of these might be like polyphenols, yeah. which we know can improve our health. But generally, they're at a very low dose, except for some really specialist 
ones. I don't even know the names of the ones that have these high doses. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that there's lots of people that say, well, I've stopped having sugar. Yeah. And instead it's fine. I'm having honey in my tea. I'm having yeah. honey on my cereal because it's so healthy for me. Well, it's not really going to have any added health benefit. Uh -huh. And that's the problem that if you like the honey, fine, have it. But what worries me is the amount of people that make that swap saying, hey, it's a super swap and yeah. it's gonna make me healthier. And in terms of the differences specifically across different honeys, because yep. there is this runny honey here from Raz mm -hmm. and you've got these raw honey from the home mm -hmm. counties and Manuka honey as well, that is too mm -hmm. expensive for us to have in the kitchen. That, that kind of difference, is there a market difference between the honeys? So there is some great research that's come out looking at all the different compositional differences of the honeys. And there's also uh, clinical trials feeding different types of honeys to people to see if it has a difference in health impacts. It's minimal from my understanding. Mm -hmm. So in terms of using all different types of sugars, yep. it's the dose rather yep. than the type. Yep and the appropriateness for the meal that you're making. Yeah, always got to think of the size effect of the health improvement it might have. Sure. So while some honeys do have additional chemicals mm. that we know are healthy for us, they're actually in such low doses at the dose that you would typically eat honey. Mm. If you did eat all of this in one go, whoa, your blood sugar's <laughs> going through the roof. But the dose is so low that it really doesn't have much of an effect. Totally. And that's the thing is we could market some of these honeys saying, great, they've got these additional chemicals in them. Mm. But actually, they're not, you're not getting enough to make a difference. And that's why if you prefer the taste of this, great. But I wouldn't select honey over sugar just because you think it's healthier for you. Thank you so much. That was great. Pleasure. Wonderful. Fab. That was excellent. That was so <laughs> Great.